Okay, so we are in the book of uh, First Peter. We're still in um, chapter three, and uh, we haven't uh, completed it. We're going to have the reading once again of the verse. Uh, but if you remember, in our first three uh, segments of this chapter, we, we so far have broken it up into three parts, and we're going to finish the uh, the final part today. But it opened up by talking about likewise wives. And then in the seventh verse it says likewise husbands. And we talked about that aspect about the husband and the wife. Um, and the beauty of that relationship and the importance of it. And how the enemy wants to destroy it. He wants to eliminate the, the authority that the man has. And, and the power that he can, he can wield over uh, uh, holding on and doing the things that God has promised and given to him to do and taking his proper stand. Then um, we then piggyback on that end of that seventh verse and we, we talked about how and if a man doesn't do this, how he doesn't honor his wife as the weaker vessel uh, and seek to protect and watch over her, then God would do what to his prayers? God would allow his prayers would be what? Hindered. And so we talked about that aspect of it. And, um, and I think that's an important thing. I think that's why we, 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 we stayed on that for a whole session so that we would understand that God definitely has uh, the man in hel uh, held in, in accountability. You are responsible to do certain things as uh, the head of the house. Uh, and, and we talked uh, pretty much uh, exhaustive on that. And then in our next session, um, and we kind of piggybacked on that second session on suffering, but in the next or the third session, we, we really got into that aspect about suffering and, and what it is. And, and, and I have to confess, just like I do with prayer and even with marriage, um, the, the real understanding as to how to do it properly, uh, I don't think anybody can give you the blueprint. As to, if, you follow, if you follow these steps, it's going to work. You have to have a fellowship with the Lord. Remember when Jesus told the disciples when they tried to cast the demon out and they couldn't cast it out and, and then they said, well, how come we couldn't cast it out? And he said, he said, this kind only comes out by what? By prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will take that verse as to mean, well, here's the formula for casting out devils. You have to pray and you have to fast. And that's not what it means. What it means is that prayer and fasting is an example of your what with God, your relationship. So these kind only come out by having that, that relationship with the Father. Right? And so if you don't have that, that intimate and that close relationship, then these, these types of... And so it's the same thing when it comes to dealing uh, with husbands and wives, with, with, uh, with dealing with, um, with suffering, with dealing with prayer. There's so much to it in its relationship aspect. I can't give you a blueprint. Follow this and it's going to work. You, you, here's 10 steps. You follow this, your prayer life's going to be great. Here's 10 steps. You follow this, your marriage is going to be great. Here's 10 steps. You do this, you'll be able to deal with suffering and difficulty. There is none. Your responsibility is that you build your relationship up with the Lord for yourself. That means you've got to take, a, take some moment and pray yourself. You've got to uh, get into the Word and read. Don't just say, well, the only time I'm going to really open my Bible is when I come here. Go into it and just say, Lord, give me some wisdom, give me some understanding. What that a lot of times you'll do, you'll find. Because God knows all things. God will have you read something that'll be relevant to what you're probably going to talk about. You'd be surprised at that. <laughs> God, God don't make no mistakes. And, he, and God is never confused. And God doesn't waste any uh, uh, anointing on anything. Anything that God does is, is, is purposeful. So today, Lord willing, we're going to finish up this. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more about the suffering because we're going to talk about the suffering of Christ, which I think we did a, a, a quite a bit on last week, but we're going to uh, piggyback on it again. And then look at some of the whys. Why did he have to go through that? So let's take a listen to the, to the verse, the chapter rather, and then we'll pick it right back up. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of jewels, or putting on of apparel. 
Let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, and in compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ye ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven, and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. All right. Here we go, once again. Uh, Peter. And I have to say that um, as we get more into the, the, the end of this uh, testament, this new covenant, this new testament, um, and as you saw when we dealt with, um, with James, how James began to tell us uh, count it all joy when you fall into what? Divers trials and temptations. Uh, and now we're, we're dealing with, uh, with Peter. And uh, Peter's also trying to get us to understand. Don't worry about your suffering. Uh, and then even in, um, uh, in, next, in the next chapter, Peter's going to talk about these apostates. And then when we get to the book of, of, of Jude... And the book of James, I'm not James, of John, it's going to talk more about apostates. And you say, well, why is so much focus on these last books about apostates? Well, what was the beginning of the church? The beginning of the church was the initiation and the development of the apostles. The end of the church age will be the initiation and the development of the apostates. Those are the people that have a form of godliness, but do what? Deny all the power. And that's the age that will be the sign. Jesus said, I, I, I won't come unless there first be a what? A falling away. So people are going to fall away from the truth. They're going to believe. Uh, 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 actually, let me show you what, what Paul said. Let's go real quick. Let's go to 1 Timothy. We talked about this when we went through Timothy, but I think it's important that we go through this one more time. 1 Timothy 4. And I'm sure y'all remember this. This wasn't too long ago. 1 Timothy chapter 4. All right. And verse 1. And look, look what Paul says. 
He says, he says, now the Spirit, who's speaking here? The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, what times? The latter times. The latter times. Okay. Some shall depart from the faith. All right, so he's letting us know that in the latter times we're going to have a, a an apostate, a, a removing away, not from spiritual stuff, not from church stuff, but from the faith. Because there's a lot of churchy stuff going on, you know, which I would say just a lot of coming together, but it has nothing to do with the development of 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 individuals and their spirit. There's a lot of false stuff going on, but let, let me let Paul tell it. He says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Okay, why are they departing? He's, and he gives, in, he gives the, the answer. Giving heed to seducing spirits. They're not departing the faith saying, I don't believe in God. I don't want to come to church no more. I don't want to read the Bible. That's not what they're doing. They're, they're coming, and they're, but they are confusing. And where's the confusion coming from? It says, giving heed to seducing what? spirits and doctrines of who? Devils. Devils. So where's the confusion coming from? It's coming from the, from the spiritual satanic realm. Demons and devils. And look what it says in, this, in verse 2. Speaking what? Lies and hypocrisies having their conscience seared with a what? Hot iron. Forbidden to marry. Committing, uh, 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 commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And that's the key. This will not affect them that believe and know the what? The truth. What sets you free? The truth, you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. Remember what Jesus said when he was standing before Pilate. Remember when we went through that in, uh, in John. And Jesus said, um, for this reason came I into the world. And then remember I stopped. I said, wait a minute. Did you just hear what Jesus said? Jesus just said, this is the reason I came into the world. And then, so I'm saying, okay, now when Jesus makes that statement, we need to know what that statement is. And what was the statement he said? That I would bear witness to the what? To the truth. So, what Jesus is coming to do is to tell us what is the truth and who is the truth I, I am the way the, the truth, truth and the light so but if there's a truth that means there's a what there's a lie, there's a lie. <laughs> right and what did, what did Paul Paul said here speaking lies in hypocrisy now why am I bringing that up because what we're dealing with today as we're going to pick up uh, and, and, and I can't go back and do all the review for this chapter because we won't finish it. We're going to try to finish it today. But if you, um, if, if we pick up right at the 17th verse of this uh, third chapter of First Peter, we see where it says, For it is, it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also has once what? Suffered for what? For sin. Alright. So, and that's clear. Who suffered for sin? Christ. Jesus did. He is our repitiation. He is our, our, our covering. He is our righteousness. And there should be no confusing about that. But the problem that we have is that we have doctrines of devils. So people will come and tell you why did Jehovah's Witness do? That in order to get to heaven, you have to put in what? Work. Works. You're not saved by work. You should do good works as we saw in when we went through James. Because, because it is good to do good works. And if you are a child of God, you should live uh, to represent and to resemble who is now your father. You should begin to look like your, what? your heavenly father. But that's not what saves you. You're saved by the work of who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And that's important to keep in mind because one of the lies is that you got to work for it. But see, the thing about it is it sounds so good. Look at what I'm doing for God. Look at what I'm, And you can build that, that resume up of all the wonderful things that you did. And then believe that I'm going to be saved because of that. Remember the ones that, that Jesus said will come to him and said, and said uh, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons in our name? Yes. 